What's up, y'all? This is your girl, Jay Renee with Prison Ryan Radio. I hope that you're doing well. This morning, we got a brother on the phone. He's an author. He goes by Pudgy Ray. We're going to holler at him. See, we got him into these books, find out more about his books, and how to keep up with him. So we're going to jump right into it. All right, what's up, bro? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. That's good. Uh, staying focused. All right, that's always good. Well, we're going to jump right into it. Tell the people a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Okay, my name is uh, Raymond Watley Jr. That's my birth name. Um, my pen name is Pudgy Ray, and uh, I'm a new incarcerated author. I'm a storyteller, and I'm currently incarcerated in Michigan, serving a 10-year um, a sentence. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, but I, I grew up on the outskirts. Um, I'm a father of a three-year-old daughter. I'm a book author. And I'm currently uh, looking for a publishing house to sign to. Okay. So um, how was it growing up on the outskirts of Michigan? Um, I would say it helped me to be well-rounded. So I can mold switch with any type of people. It okay. benefited me. I, I can say that. It benefited me and it helped me to know how to adapt to different walks of life. Whether it's somebody in the hood or somebody that's not in the, in the suburbs, I can talk and have a conversation with anybody. So I would say... It definitely benefited me. Okay, yeah, that's definitely a beneficial trait to have, and I'm sure it goes over into writing books. So speaking of books, you know, what got you into it? What inspired you to start writing? Um, I was hit with this sentence, and it, it kind of basically crushed me internally. You know, I was upset about, you know, having a newborn daughter. I was angry at myself. I was angry at the decision I made that landed me in prison. And basically, I'm like, I felt like I was just a number, but I wanted to be somebody. I knew I failed my child. I knew I had to do I had to do something. I couldn't just sit and just do the time. I got my GED in here. I got my degree in liberal arts in here, an associate's degree in two years to get. And I was grateful for that, but I realized that they didn't offer no chances to make no real money inside prison. You know, I still got my daughter to provide for. Right. I was looking for a way to help me um, to have a fin- financial background, a, a financial um, stepping, stone, step, stepping stone for when I come home. Right. And writing books, this pen, this ink, it gave me a chance to do that. It gave me a purpose. Mm. So I just basically did it to start making income, but I realized I also had a passion for it. Okay. All right, well, that's what's up. Having a passion about something that you can make money from is definitely, you know what I mean, what people are trying to do. It's like part of the American dream. Um, so yeah. congratulations on your book. You know, that's definitely a major achievement, especially being incarcerated. So tell us the name of it and um, what genre is it? Okay, the, uh, the name of it is called The Found You Secret by Pudgy Ray. That's uh, P-U-G-G-I-E-R-A-Y. Um, the genre is, I like to say is reality fiction because everything that I write in these books can actually happen. Okay. There's not going to be nobody in my books that's jumping out of airplanes and still living. Okay. Nothing like that. But it's, uh, it's definitely, I would say reality fiction. Okay, reality fiction. So what made you pick that type of genre as opposed to something else? Um, basically, I feel like everybody, anybody who, who's a book author, they write what they like to read. And basically, I wrote what I like to read based off people I've read in the past. I like to read urban books as well as commercial books. So it's kind of a mixture of both. Okay, I can dig it. So, um, tell us, so when, when readers read your book, like, what would you want them to receive by reading your stories? Um, I would say, I want you to enjoy yourself. Uh, I'm going to make you laugh. I'm going. I might make you cry. You might be even mad at some of my characters. You're going to invest your emotions into my craft, just like when we we emotionally invested into sports, music, or even cooking or dancing. I feel like my job as a storyteller is to make the reader feel some kind of emotion, and so I'm taking you on a roller coaster ride. You, you're taking this walk into these characters' lives. You're going to feel the pain, the love, the darkness, the happiness that they experience. You're going to feel it. And I, I want you to say throughout this book, throughout all my books, what if this happened to me? Okay, you're trying to provoke some thought. Okay. Um, yeah. you know, that's what's up. You know, seeing that, you know, what inspires you to write and how you write, 
um, and that you've read a different, you know, all kind of different books. What's your thoughts on, you know, the fiction book industry right now? I feel like the state of the book industry right now, they looking for the next big author. I feel like it's at a standstill right now as far as the names who've been in it. It ain't nobody really rising up. That's how I feel. I feel like the industry is looking for the next legend. And as we know, we got James Patterson sold the most books all the time. He's, he's still pumping out classics, something like 400 million books sold. Right. He's at the top commercially. But then you got John Grissom, so you got Ashley uh, Antoinette, Jaquavis Coleman. They, they at the top of the street with mm -hmm. Then you got people like Kwame T, book turn movie, breaking records from behind the wall. Then you got, uh, you got Wahida Clark, you got Cash with Lockdown Publications. Yeah. And all of those people are, are named are already legends in their own right. But the industry is looking for the next legend. I just feel like God has a calling for me. I can feel it. The universe is calling for me. And here I come. Here I am. All right. So the authors that you um, named, are those the ones that inspired you? Or, or you got some more to add to that list? Uh, most definitely. I would say they all inspired me at different times. I would say... Kwame T inspired me from a different perspective, thus because, because he's in the he's in prison. He's the he's the best he's the best prisoner turned author for me to study. He's probably the most successful person that accomplished book writing or, or movie writing from behind the wall. He opened my eyes and changed the way I think of what is really possible from behind the wall. He set the best example. But of course, I was exp I was inspired by everybody that I read that I, that I just named. But he, he gave the best example of what I can do from being without having my freedom. You I know? got you. Yeah, for sure. All right, so let's talk about um the future. Are there any more projects that you're currently working on or hope to have? Yes. Um, the Family Secret that's that's uh, out right now. Pudgy Ray available on Amazon right now. My second book is called The Fetty. It's going to be my um, my next release. It's about a conspiracy within the fentanyl crisis. I'm sp and I'm uh, specifically looking for a publishing company to help me release this one because I want to produce it to a mass market. I want to go big, very big as possible with this one. My third book that I wrote is called What If Chicago. The fourth book is called The Devil, with the Devil is a Lady. My fifth book is called I Miss You, I Love You, I Hate You. And, uh... Hopefully, I feel like all I feel like all my books can one day be a movie. They all have the, that type of potential. Okay. I've written five those five so far. All right, so we look forward to seeing them on the big screen then. Um, so tell people how they can reach out to you. Um, you can reach me on IG at Pudgy Ray Books. That's P U G G I E R A Y Books on Instagram. But if you want to message me directly, you can download the JPay app in your app store to your phone. You can add me directly on there. You put in my, my first name, my last name, first name Raymond, R-A-Y-M-O-N-D, -E last name W-H-A-T-L-U-Y. Then you put in my inmate number, 885158. You add Michigan for the state. So that's, yeah, that's how you can reach me. All right, so, you know, I always give people an opportunity to drop gems on the people um, before they depart, so we definitely want to extend that to you, so the floor is yours. All right, I just want to say anybody out there who, who has an inspiration to, to write and to do something, specifically, I want to talk to the people that's incarcerated or the people that know somebody that's incarcerated that's trying to do this. It's not easy. It's blood, sweat, and tears. It's very hard to do this from behind the wall. But if you believe in yourself, I don't care what you're going through. You might be on lockdown one day. You might have had a bad conversation with your family. You might be going through it, trying to talk to your kids, whatever you're going through. You might be low on funds. Use that anger and use that that tribulation as your energy, as your fuel to keep going. Me personally, I know I have what it takes within this industry to, to, to prevail, and I, I'm not going to let anything stop me. I know... Um, the sky is the limit. And I do want to thank, I want to thank um, Big Sis, Jay Renee, for this opportunity to speak on this platform. I want to uh, thank Dutch for this platform. And I hope the power that be can free him because, you know, he's helping, he's showing prisoners how to do right from behind the wall. I feel like he can do more as a free man. So 
thank him, thank Prison Riot Radio for this interview. Thank you to my mom for being my backbone. Thank you to my child for my motivation. Um, thank you to God for, for my gift of storytelling. And thank you in advance for, for purchasing my new book. And thank you for listening.